I think what we'll what I'll talk about is uh, you know when we talk about sustainable development, there's a foundation that has to be built, and uh, we'll talk about that foundation on which inclusive, sustainable, equitable, all kinds of development can happen. Uh, I represent Borda, which is a German non-profit organization. We've actually been working in Ladakh for the last uh, about 25 years, first on micro hydro projects, passive solar energy. Uh, we helped to set up a local NGO called LEDEC, the Ladakh Ecological Development Group. Um, this one, uh, the story starts with sanitation. And uh, we were, uh, you know, we were invited by the then um, uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Prasanna, Prasanna Ramaswamy, and, um, and Zahida Bano, who was the uh, administrator of the Municipal Committee of Leh. Uh, two wonderful people without which this work wouldn't have happened. Um, now, you know, uh, Leh has a variable population. In the summertime, you've got one lakh people in Leh on any given day. In the winter, you have 30,000. Uh, you've got 80% of homes now use flush toilets. 15 years ago, 80% used to use dry toilets, right, which produce no wastewater, no pollution. Uh, hotels, uh, there are over six, 700 hotels and guest houses. They all have septic tanks uh, that leach into the groundwater. In about 2016, 17, some researchers found that there was E. coli contamination in the groundwater, which people used to drink. So, uh, you know, they invited us to lay to say, look, what can we do? Because we are a sanitation uh, non-profit technical uh, organization. Uh, now, they're building a sewerage network, but that will complete in the next two years, serve only 40% of the town, right? And that is 2017, that is still five years away. So uh, they invited us in April 2017 to say, what can we do here, right? So very, very quickly, uh, we said fecal sludge management, where you clean out your septic tanks regularly. The sludge that comes out of it or the septage, you treat it uh, instead of discarding it on open land, which is what was happening um, in Leh at the time, uh, which is pretty much still what happens in most of India, because FSM, fecal sludge management, is a very new concept. We said it can work in Leh, but it'll require a lot of adaptation because of the terrain, because of the climate. So going very quickly, um, you know, they said, look, we don't have money to do FSM. Uh, we don't have time because this was April. By October, you have to finish whatever you want to do. Uh, so we said, okay, why don't we, why don't we do a PPP structure? Uh, we'll bring in the capital. We'll design, build, operate everything. The government has to invest zero, absolutely nothing. Uh, we'll take all the responsibility. But for that, we need the hotels to agree that they will clean their septic tanks once a year. We will provide the service and they will pay for that. Uh, we called the hotel owners together, which Zaida and Prasanna sort of, you know, organized for us. And they said, sure, you know, look, 7,000 rupees a year if you have to spend, no problem. Uh, so this was the first public-private partnership in fecal sludge management in India. And now that's been replicated in Andhra Pradesh, 78 towns, Telangana, about 60 towns, and they're uh, building on that. Uh, so Borda raised the full money to invest in the treatment plant. Net-net, uh, we invested about a little over a crore of rupees or so. The Municipal Committee of Leh provided the land. Uh, we got a partner, CDD Society uh, of Bangalore, to design the system. And we invited the Blue Water Company to come and run the whole system end to end for a five year contract. Uh, basically, Blue Water Company gets 90% of the fees paid by the hotels after they provide the service. Uh, the municipality keeps 10% for doing very little work. And with the 90%, we aim to cover our operating cost and to return the capital which, uh, which uh, Borda has invested. Uh, this is a treatment plant, fully biological system, uses almost zero electricity. Uh, we have plants in there, we have flowers in there. There's a playground next door. There is no smell, no pollution. In fact, uh, people, before we got the full fencing built, before the municipality built the complete fencing, uh, people used to come and take walks because that was the only paved area in that place where people could come and take a nice walk. And we had to finally close it because as a, as a fecal sludge treatment plant, it's actually... Uh, it's not hazardous, but it's not safe for people either, especially with kids and all. Uh, so these are some of the uh, pictures. You know, we painted this truck, which was this dirty truck that the municipality used to run. We gave it a slightly Buddhist uh, quotation on it. Uh, we said, happiness comes from what you give, not what you receive. So give us your shit and be happy. Uh, we, are a little, we are a little worried how people would take it, but uh, people have been quite tickled by it um, up there. Uh, so, you know, we, we finished the whole project and from the first time we visited, April 18th, I think was the first time I went to Leh, uh, in four months we had the inauguration of the system. Other cities, other states in India are struggling for two, two years to get similar projects off the ground because they don't get collaboration locally to get land allocation, permissions, etc. The, kind of, the kind of support we got 
from municipality and uh, the hill council and the, uh, the DC's office was, I think, unprecedented in India till today anywhere. And that was, you know, that's the reason we were able to do it. Uh, total investment is a little over a crore. Uh, we earn revenues of about 35, 40 lakhs. Uh, we do earn a profit. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll return the full money to Borda in time or not. Uh, we're able to operate about eight months of the year because of the cold and everything freezes. Uh, now, the important is we clean about 850 tanks annually, so about 100 plus per month on average. Uh, earlier, the municipal committee used to provide the same service. They used to clean about 60 per year. So you can see there's a 15-fold increase in the amount of fecal sludge being collected and safely treated, which means that fecal sludge is not going into the groundwater. Um, and they used to lose money doing it. We are earning a profit doing it, right, because of efficiency and control and customer service. Uh, we also got an award from the Ministry of uh, Housing and Urban Affairs in 2018 for a system we developed which uses multiple pumps because in incline, it's a problem with many small towns, you can't pull the sludge, you know, there's, a tr there's a truck with a pump and it can't pull the sludge all the way and then you get inefficient service and spillage and we were able to, our team was able to work and design the system and now that's used in many, many towns with narrow roads or inclines. Uh, there's some photos, uh, we believe in, uh, you know, our sanitation workers, I say, if all the lawyers, all the engineers went on holiday for a month in India, yeah, life would go on just fine, right? If all the sanitation workers, all the garbage collectors went on holiday for a month in India, we all would be in deep shit, right, literally. Uh, so we have a very nice, in our office, we have a building, a nice facility, television, nice kitchen, nice bathroom. Uh, we have had almost zero turnover, whereas normally you have a six-month cycle, these people quit their jobs. People have stayed with us for two and a half years, good working conditions. Uh, that's how the plant looks. We serve the army and other uh, players, uh, non-residential non players, and this is... Uh, uh, now, just very quickly, this is how fecal sludge is typically discharged in India. Uh, we built, this is the first treatment plant we built near Bangalore. Now it is discharged into a wall. You can sniff anywhere on this plant. It's near the Bangalore airport. You will smell nothing. Uh, I'll spend two minutes on this. Uh, as we, you know, from sanitation, we started working on other things. We said, look, small towns in India have got very weak administration, good people, not enough training, not, not enough money. They don't plan well, and therefore when they implement projects, it's a copy and paste of what happened in Chandigarh or Delhi or Bombay, and it's a disaster for small towns. You waste too much money, don't get what you want. So we uh, launched this new project where we surveyed 300 residents of Leh and sort of got a sense of what their problems were. Water, water supply was a big concern for them, parking, sewage, um, and uh, we set out this project which was to make lay more livable, sustainable and inclusive. And the key tenets of that program are to help local authorities formulate good plans on what should lay look like, right? Uh, improve the understanding of climate change and build leadership and management skills, not just administrative skills. And then uh, sort of bring change makers together and uh, it sort of create more of a community that cares about the town and acts on it. So I won't go through all this, uh, but we have done a lot of work on you know, creating events, uh, designing public toilets and walkable streets. We said, look, you know, why don't we just make the whole center of lay no, no traffic, right? Just make it only walkable, maybe some golf carts for people who can't. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, even, even the DC Prasanna at that time thought that was a bit too much. And, uh, you know, but, you know, we got one street redesigned. Uh, we have published a beautiful study. I have a few copies here on the water situation in lay. Uh, this, is a, this is a street we redeveloped. It used to take 30 minutes for cars to go from one end to the other. Now it takes six minutes because we took out the parking uh, and we made it one way. And people actually initially objected a lot, but now they love it. Even the shopkeepers love it because people can just walk and hang out there. It's called Changspa Street. Uh, we're doing detailed studies. Uh, we're doing uh, leadership training programs for senior leaders and uh, future leaders from NGOs and government. A lot of exposure visits and promoting the idea of tw continuous 24 by 7 water supply, which actually results in less water, less energy, less wastage, and more collection of water revenue for cities. Uh, sorry. So our plans continue to, uh, you know, to help Lay become, uh, you know, we, we, we see there's a place where they were going to build a multi-story parking right off the main market. We said, look, let's make it a multi-story park instead. And that's what we are doing. It's a two-story park with sports and sort of recreational facilities. Um, a bunch of things that we are doing. We are pioneering the green hotels project there, where uh, hotels can act to reduce their footprint. Just a couple of highlights from the water report we did. Uh, Leh, like India, Leh has a water management problem, not a water problem. They have enough water, it is just not managed well. And that's why all our cities are having a water problem, not because we don't have water, but because we treat water as a single-use resource, like plastic. 
Uh, we bring it from far away, we use it for a few seconds and boom, it's gone. So we promote the idea of capturing it, treating it and then reusing it for productive purposes. Uh, and we've been working on you know, doing metering uh, so that you can charge for the water fairly, reduces wastage, increases revenue. Uh, other thoughts for Ladakh, I think Pangong Lake is one of those disasters waiting to happen because there's no planned uh, tourism over there and we have submitted drawings on how to manage the wastewater and the waste there. Uh, no rest stops along the way. If you drive five, six kilometers in Leh, you won't find a decent toilet uh, from you know, Leh to Pangong, Leh to Nubra. Uh, we're actually promoting uh, the idea of having zero water bottles in Leh. Right? The first city maybe in the country, maybe in the world, which will have zero water bottles while protecting the income that shopkeepers and water this thing owns through bulk storage, reusable water bottles, etc. Very doable if there's some political will. And then looking at agricultural self-sufficiency, medicinal and high value plants and uh, looking at surpluses. Uh, we're also launching a program where we're working with small town administrators and uh, councillors and building their awareness and skills about sustainable urbanization and leadership, um, you know, urban leadership. And this is one of our wastewater treatment plants in Bangalore, right in the heart of Bangalore in a housing community. And uh, all the water that we use for flushing is treated sewage. Uh, the swimming pool is next door, the walking path is around this little bed. And um, for my friend who's doing the flower business, well, there's some beautiful flowers that we grow using the sewage uh, right there. Thank you very much. Super. Thank you. That was super. Both uh, meaning the presentations were super. And now the last uh, uh, sort of conversation we're going to have with this Renzen. minute Namaste in sabhi ko jule hamare taraf se mera koi itna zyada bolna nahi aata phir bhi main bolne ki koshish karungi main looms of ladakh mein kaam karti hu pashmina ke hamare looms of ladakh mein pashmina yakul shibul ki shibul mein kaam karti hai pehle hamare ko pashmina ke bare mein kuch bhi nahi pata tha uska value bhi nahi pata tha ki pashmina kya cheez hai जब से हमने ये लोम सुब लदाख में ये पश्मीना का काम शुरू किया तब से हमें इसका वैल्यू पता लग गया लोम सुब लदाख 2016 में स्टार्ट किया था उस टाइम हमारे लदाख का डीसी सर पर्सन आरामा सोमी जी था उसी ने ये लोम सुब लदाख स्टार्ट किया उस टाइम हम लोग घर में बैठे रहते थे कुछ काम नहीं करते थे फार्मर्स वगैरह बाहर सिर्फ खेती का वगैरह ये सब करके बैठ जाते थे फिर सर गाँव गाँव आके ये जो बेला बैठे लड़कियों को इकट्ठे करके तुम लोग को ये काम देगा हम थोड़ा पैसा आ जाएगा ऐसे बोल के सभी को इकट्ठे करके ये काम दिलाया फिर उस टाइम तीन महीने का ट्रेनिंग शुरू किया तीन महीने के ट्रेनिंग शुरू के बाद फिर कुछ प्रोडक्ट्स बन गया फिर सर ने सोचा फिर हाँ प्रोडक्ट्स तो बन गया आप तुम लोग कैसे सेल करोगे प्रोडक्ट्स बन गया था फिर सेल करने के लिए फिर सर ने सोचा फिर उस टाइम हमारे सर्दी का सीजन था एक स्नो सिक्की चल रहा था फिर उस टाइम थोड़ा सा सेल किया कुछ दिन का पंद्रह दस पंद्रह दिन का सेल किया तो उस टाइम एक लाख से ऊपर सेल हो गया फिर हम सब पूरा खुशी हो गया हाँ इतना सेल हो रहा है अभी पश्मीना बिकने लग गया पता लग गया ऐसे फिर उसके बाद पहले हम लोग 200 लड़कियां काम करते थे अभी हमारे पास 250 से ऊपर हो गया अभी और बहुत सारे लोग हमारे इसमें जोड़ना चाहते हैं पर उनको हम नहीं जोड़ सकते जोड़ तो सकते पर उनको ट्रेनिंग की ज़रूरत है उनको चरखा चाहिए उनको लूम्स चाहिए हम नहीं दे सकते हमारे पास इतना मतलब इतना इनकम नहीं हो रहा अभी अभी सभी इसमें काम करके बहुत खुश हो रहे हैं पश्मीना आती है हमारे लद्दाख में चंगथंग चंगथंग साइड में बहुत सारा पश्मीना आता है किसी के पास 200 सौ बकरिया हैं किसी के पास हज़ार से भी ऊपर बकरिया अपने एक एक घर में होते हैं उन सब को इकट्ठे करके दिहारिंग पलन वाले इकट्ठे करके लाते हैं फिर उसको सफाई करके हम लोग खरीदते हैं हमारी वजह से मार्केटिंग का पश्मीना भी मार्केटिंग में मतलब अच्छा हो रहा है अभी सेल अच्छा हो रहा है पश्मीना 
पश्मीना पहले तो पश्मीने का हम कम न सिर्फ छाली टेंट ये शनम्बू वगैरह बनाते थे अभी हम अभी लुम्स ऑफ लद्दाख में नया बन रहा है शॉल्स स्वेटर ग्लोव्स मतलब हम जो भी पहनता है हम अच्छे अच्छे बना के बेचते हैं थैंक यू that sort of uh, rounds up and ends uh, the session thank you for all really uh, pioneering activities that all of you all have done right from uh, what was explained by abilasha right down to renzen and of course the technology to keep a clean green sort of um, city town house uh, was presented to i think now we'll open it up for questions sir would you like to say a few things to round up something yeah so so questions table 1 table yes yeah, so uh, i have a brief comment uh, addressed to mr watal you see when we talk about jammu and kashmir sometimes it appears to me there is elephant in the room which we are not looking at mainly if you look at jammu kashmir the macro picture is the following that government expenditure state government expenditure even in the normal year like 2017 18 was 57% of total gsdp of which 44% basically was financed by the central government and this is apart from the mandated share of revenues that the state government receives this is a discretionary grant it you know and, and I, i'm not too sure what exactly the government is doing to ensure that this particular dependency uh, comes to an end i mean if you look at the relevant figures for himachal pradesh for himachal state government expenditure which is a similar state mountainous is only 28% of the total gsdp so the question is what is the macro plan that the government has and whether it's been married to a no micro plan to you know reduce this dependency so there is a quest question a you comment and a question i mean whether you <laughs> <laughs> no, no, comment and question are two different things anyway but uh, Uh, since you mentioned you see when the planning commission was there there were these uh, some things called the special status states the northeast was also included in these himachal was a hill state uh, which were had other dispensations and it's true that uh, you know the support which was given to these special status states including erstwhile gnk and the northeast etc where bulk of the funding did come from the central government actually the challenge i must mention let's not get into uh, who spending what over there and that issue is being addressed is really now that it has become a union territory or union territories it has fallen out of allocations of something which i'm i'm being technical here but i think you should know there's something called the finance commission now this is a constitutional body which sits every 5 years it decides or it makes projections for the next 5 years that what your growth the country is going to have the basis of the growth i'm just putting it very simply it decides or it makes estimates that over the next 5 years what are the taxations that you can get direct and indirect taxes etc and then how do you share it between the center and the states because we are a you know we are a federal this thing now the moment you become a union territory you're not a state so you you fall out of this formula in fact one of the problems again to inform you that mr kejriwal keeps going about is that delhi doesn't get an allocation from the finance commission though you might be a contributor in terms of taxes etc which might be going into the larger pool so what the uh, what is done is you're given a grant now this issue is really the challenge which is being addressed by the finance commission which has been given an extension uh, so i mean all i can say jammu kashmir and ladakh will continue to get uh, need the support of the uh, of the central government and it will continue now what the formula is it comes out i can't comment on so i'm also making a comment that uh, yeah these northeastern states etc i mean tomorrow you can challenge that we shouldn't give any, anything to nagaland or we shouldn't give anything to meghalaya i mean they are being given so jnk has been support and the, the, it's a it will remain these are border st states which require special dispensations that's the answer yeah. thank you sir question yes thank 
Thank you, sir. That was good. So, uh, my question, there's a question and there's also a suggestion. Uh, the question is to Mr. Vardal. Uh, first of all, you were talking about acacia that grows on the roadside of uh, Kashmir and you were talking about the honey that comes out of it. Now, you were saying that you're going to make it a business and all the other things that they like you are not going to make a business I'm so sorry for that sentence but like you said that it should be included in the production its production and the other things but uh, I'd like to inform you about a, about an incident uh -huh. that happened last year in 2018 uh, that was in the month of September or October uh, the Gujarati farmers it's related to the Gujarati farmers so they tried to grow grow an indigenous variety of potato in there and the what followed was very miserable actually and that was that variety of potato was being used by Lay's the company Lay's which is owned by PepsiCo for making the chips and what they did was they sued these farmers and it dragged on to be a very big case so what I'm saying is that we are talking about producing this honey and selling it in the market but how are you people who are the local people they're not even like we are jumping into this idea but we are not talking about the consequences and secondly uh, you also mentioned that these bees produce another product which has medicinal properties now let me tell you about the Gujarat the situation in Gujarat and Telangana the, they also discovered a herb which had medicinal properties and uh, this is not to offend anyone but the Bill and Melinda Foundation, uh, they actually used the village children, the local children in there, as guinea pigs for experimenting the drugs on them, which were being made from there. And the government was not very successful in protecting them. So when we are talking about these ideas, you should uh, also think about that, how are you going to provide them the security? How are you going to make them realize that they won't be harmed in the process of production? And uh, this is uh, the question for you. And secondly, I would uh, like to give a suggestion to Mr. Manas. Uh, you were talking about in the PDF, you talked about the zero plastic bottles, the thing. But I'm saying is that uh, I like to talk about it. It's, very, it's a very indigenous invention and I don't think so many people know about it. So there's this person, Ashwat Hegde, and he's the founder of NV Green. Uh, which is the creator of 100% eco-friendly biodegradable, eco day biodegradable period. Now, this bag is being produced from the oils of potato, tapioca, and the natural starch of almost seven ingredients. And a 16-inch bag of this quality costs rupees three, but the same costs rupees two. So, and you can also, this is a multi-purpose plastic product. So what I'm saying is that when we are talking about the creativity level, so why don't you are going to increase, we are talking about increasing tourism, but with that comes the problem of waste management and everything. And as in the yesterday session, Mr. Karan Singh mentioned about electric vehicles. Similarly, if you, like, if you can invite this person because he's currently producing these bags in Abu Dhabi, if you could make an agreement with him, if you could bring him to India, and you could make this creative invention and uh, you know you could broadcast it everywhere that Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir we are having these type of packaging these products then it could be very useful for you so that's the question thank you I think uh, your concern is that uh, that some potato tissue or whatever was introduced in Gujarat and it caused any problem I have not made any suggestion that some new plant has to be grown over there or some new bee has to be brought in. <laughs> you see, uh, this is a practice which has gone on for centuries over there. In fact, apiculture as we call it, or bees is a very, they, they are pollinators. They are a part and parcel of horticulture. In fact, you can't get apples if you don't have bees. I mean, it's, it works like that. All I was saying is that there is a plant called acacia, which we call babool here. It's, an, it's another variety. It, it, the variety which you find basically kikar or in Delhi region, it produces, some, it, it produces more pollen than nectar. 
you see when a when a bee goes it's a very simple thing it's looking for either nectar which is carbohydrate or it is looking for pollen which is protein to for its hive now acacia is a basically a, a plant which produces a lot of nectar it grows wild over there i mean it's being i didn't plant it there or nobody planted it there it grows there it's it's not poison or the bees which are collecting things out is not poison all i was saying is that the stuff which comes out of this and the honey which is organically and naturally produced over there is rare you don't get to eat it in india whoever is aggregating it in the kashmir valley is exporting it you it sells at very high values outside i said that what you get to eat over here you know what dabar honey and uh, this other chavan prash honey or whatever these things are being sold it is basically rice syrup which is imported from china fed to bees and sold as honey and you are told that in winter it doesn't crystallize that's what i said i mean that's a side issue because we don't have very proper honey standards in this country now the best honey out of this place is going out do you know that again i'm just uh, uh, for information that uh, in kerala the best honey comes from not from flowers from rubber and i'll i'll link it up with pashmina i'll say something on that while i'm talking in fact it's rubber honey <laughs> which is produced you probably never tasted it you probably never heard of it yeah so that's all i'm saying that so nobody is bringing in some potato from outside and trying to i'm just saying there's a problem that good acacia honey is disappearing because acacia is disappearing so we have to do something something which comes it's defined under the wolves act etc in the us it is something which comes from a kashmir goat now those goats have been were told that x goat y goat whatever from there now this goat can come from mongolia it could be from china it could be from tibet it could be from ladakh now in fact as you mentioned that mongolia they overgrazed and all that a lot of the stuff is coming out of kyrgyzstan turkmenistan turkey in fact india has no presence outside that's all i'm saying and the way it works is a pashmina is something which comes from the undercoat of the of that goat the fiber has to be less than 19 microns i mean these are uh, these are definitions which are again these standards are given strangely in some of these us acts etc they define what is kashmir how much admixture can you make now what is marketed outside if i go to a st high end store over there and pay money i'll get i'll no oh, i'll get kashmir it could be from anywhere here you go to even a fancy place in delhi the fellow will try to sell you some wool and say it's <laughs> it's pashmina you really don't know so number one is standardization which is not there number two the you know 600 or 800 hectares you are too small now what again what we require are actually global if you want to position yourself nationally or internationally you have to look at sourcing and value chains now one of the ways branding now perhaps can you think of a gi gi means a ge geographical what is it called mark in, uh, in, yeah like basmati or something like that now that is something which can give suddenly make this indian pashmina or indian kashmir it'll it, you know it'll from 1 to you can go to 100 but if it is just 
you're not even 1% of, you know, today Kashmir is being made in Argentina. Correct. It's just the goat <laughs> which is required and you need that, uh, that particular kind of fiber which comes out of it. And most of this weaving is not done here. It's done in the US, it is done in Europe and it is branded and sold. So you, you know, the whole game, even from the 700 hectares, you can become a high powered industry if you look at these new techniques of GIs and this and that and position yourself as a, as a product. Otherwise, it will be just, uh, you know, wo Dilli heart mein kuch bik bas. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, yeah, uh, that, that we'll take one more question and there's a response from the panel. Maybe two questions, three questions, but four, five, six, but that's too many, yeah? We'll just, it depends on whether you're lucky. But from the panel, definitely. There's a, there's a mic there. Uh, sir, actually you have rightly pointed out that in the end, uh, this Ladakh Pashmina might or most probably will become something which is sold at Delhi Heart and all. Uh, just now because uh, of the legislative ch changes, so much money is being pumped in and Ladakh Pashmina is also uh, getting so much attention. Uh, for but but it has its loopholes. For example, uh, they were given this uh, bureau, the Bureau of Indian Standards. They opened their uh, office there. Uh, but what we found out that there is no uh, demarcation. There's no different units codes given to the pashmina from Ladakh or the pashmina which is machine you, uh, made with the machine spun yarn which has nylon content in it which is 5%, the other one which has 10%. So there's no uh, differentiation between them. So until unless they have a GI, uh, even the Bureau of Indian Standards coding, it's just, a, uh, it, it's, it's just to you know, satisfy the locals that their Pashmina has been uh, you know, recognized. The second thing that uh, you mentioned is that they need to have this uh, branding and this uh, technology upgradation and collective bargaining power because what is happening right now is that money is being pumped in and a lot of small uh, enter like one person independent retailer he's opening a shop with pashmina shawls now th and then the cost of the shawls it's coming down and there's no design intervention no innovation in the technology of the product so in the end they are going to land up at Dili Hart uh, and uh, so the so what I'm saying is a convergence of departments and uh, technology research and development is the need of the hour and the central government has to do hand holding in it. Yeah, I think we got it. Boss, can we just so be a bit brief on just, this? Yeah, so just, so happy to look at biodegradable plastics. Till now the thing is that they come with a lot of ifs and buts and most of the stuff that is sold as biodegradable plastic even in India is actually not easily degradable. It requires specific machinery, specific conditions, and it all just goes to landfill. So I'm a little skeptical about it. So I think the point is we need to look at, you know, when you look at the R's, right, when you talk about environmental science, the first thing is reduce. And uh, I've been involved with, you know, in fact, a lot of my undergraduate work was with the Club of Rome, with some of the founders of Club of Rome uh, in system dynamics. Uh, and they wrote the limits to grow, Donella Meadows, etc. And they say, you know, recycling will push the envelope, but every time you want to recycle PET bottles, it's 40% recycled pet and 60% virgin pet, right? So you're not really getting away from the problem by recycling because you need to keep raising the pyramid so you can use the recycled material along with fresh material. And I think the thing is that especially in tourist areas or in areas that, you know, that need that, that have their fragility and we want to preserve the, the environment which you're not able to do anywhere in this country, uh, we need to look at reduce and recycle should come as the last option, not the first option. Now, reducing can be bad for the economy, but it could be good for life, right? So if GDP becomes the only parameter that we want to use, then we are, we are doomed. We are no, there's no hope for us in the long term. If you want to look at quality of life, maintaining the environment, improving the way people live and health and so on, you say, okay, GDP is one factor, but quality of life is another. And then you have to look at how do you reduce what we use, not just use more and more and try to recycle it and feel good about that. Okay, no, that was very good, Manas. Thanks for that. Uh, the lady there, she's been putting up. I need a mic. Can we make the uh, comments or question? Yeah. No, so we want not question, no more comments. Yeah, so it's a question for Abhilasha. When you want to Looms of India, global, then a mindset that will be very necessary to change, which I'm seeing in many NGOs, and I'm also asking you. 
एन जी ओज लास्ट डेकेड से हमेशा गवर्नमेंट की तरफ देखती हैं या फाउंडर्स की तरफ या फंडिंग की तरफ पर एन जी ओज अपने अपने ऑपरेशन में कंज्यूमर्स को क्या चाहिए वो क्यों नहीं लाती क्योंकि अल्टीमेटली शुरुआत होती है स्किल डिवेलपमेंट से पर कहीं रास्ता गुम जाता है कि भाई मार्केट को क्या चाहिए और यही हो रहा है फिर आप चलिए दस्तकार दस लोग ना आएंगे आपके पास क्योंकि शायद जो प्रोडक्ट्स बन रहे हैं कंज्यूमर बहुत आगे निकल चुका और प्रोडक्ट्स जो बन रहे हैं वो बीसवीं बीसवीं सदी के लायक नहीं रहे तो फिर एन का फ्यूचर क्या होगा तो फिर लूम्स का फ्यूचर और लद्दाख का फ्यूचर क्या होगा जियो टैगिंग और जो कि भी बातें हुई हैं दे आर रेलिवेंट पर माइंडसेट ही नहीं बदला तो तो दो साल में ओके सो कैन वी जस्ट टेक दैट क्वेश्चन एट लंच बिकॉज दैट आंसर इज अ बिट टफ एंड कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इफ यू डोंट माइंड टेक इट इट अदरवाइज वी आर होल्डिंग इट बैक सॉरी द लेडी हियर जस्ट सर देव देव पुट देंड्स अप अर्लियर नो नो दे हेलो सर सर मेरा क्वेश्चन अभिलाषा मैम से है और मैडम रेगजन से है मेरी कल एक मीटिंग हुई थी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टेक्सटाइल से बैम्बू फाइबर को लेकर के तो जैसे कि आप लोग लूम्स के ऊपर काम कर रहे हैं तो मेरा ये कहना है कि मैं बैम्बू के धागे से कपड़े बनाने का रिसर्च कर रही हूँ एंड आई एम फ्रॉम सिबार्ट सेंटर फॉर इंडियन बैम्बू रिसोर्स एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो बैम्बू के धागे जो हम लोग बना रहे हैं वो फाइन ट्यून में हो रहा है नहीं तो एक्चुअली आई वॉन्ट अ सजेशन फ्रॉम यू कि द सेम लूम यू आर यूजिंग इन पश्मीना कैन वी यूज ऑन फॉर प्लांट फाइबर और फॉर बैम्बू फाइबर लाइक कार्डिंग मशीन एंड स्पिनिंग मशीन एंड और लूम आई थिंक डिस्कस इट बिकॉज दिस इज वन से लेडी दे सॉरी एंड देन देन यू आफ्टर दैट एंड देन वी आर क्लोजिंग That's the oh. last way. So we had our time up to 13:45. We are already 10 minutes ahead. Uh, I represent an organization called the Integrated Mountain Initiative, IMI for short, and uh, we work extensively across the Indian Himalayan region, that is from the west to the uh, to the east, and. Uh, uh, we are an, uh, we are a, a, a voluntary organization. All of us who work there work voluntarily. Nobody gets paid. Uh, Uh, since i was we were told that uh, we have to ask only questions and not make comments uh, as mr bhatakur just said so i will ask a question to mr manas sarath we are working on waste management in the indian himalayan region this is going to be the third year when we are going to have a himalayan clean up we have once a year a himalayan clean up before that we do a lot of homework on how to go about it and that, you know extensively from eastern himalayas uttarakhand jammu and kashmir uh, himachal to the northeast everywhere uh, we do that and it's all voluntary the last two years we had no money we just gave a clarion call and you will be surprised 15000 people came up to do the clean up and uh, this actually it, i mean people think that himalayas are pristine and it's very clean and you go there for meditation it's a very different concept that people have you know P- tourists who go there but when you go there in reality it's something totally Uh, different so we're trying to clean up the himalayas and uh, of course we are uh, meeting with a lot of bottlenecks uh, mr Ma- uh, manas rath talked about uh, bringing out i mean your organization is coming up with a strategy on solid waste management so i'd like to know a little more uh, you can tell me now or you can tell me later and uh, if your strategy is already in place can we collaborate with you because we are looking for ways and, and you are already working in ladakh huh? we'd like to uh, sort of find ways and means of disposing of because the most impor- uh, the most difficult thing is disposal hmm? and uh, i'm also uh, very intrigued by this zero plastic uh, bottles in leh i mean how successful are you have you been because this is what we are trying to implement across the himalayan states in fact uh, mr conrad sangma the chief minister of meghalaya has uh, made his st- his offices in the secretariat entirely plastic bottles free so this way many other states are also emulating but i'd like to know from you how you went about it so it's a learning process you know we all learn and and, and we emulate and uh, i would also like to pose a question to mr ashwini singla who talked about uh, tourism uh, 
Uh, now, uh, you also briefly mentioned about waste management. Oh, he's not here. No, he's oh, okay. But you can I give us the question, we'll put you I in wanted to know from him if he has any recommendations, uh, if, if he, since he's an expert on tourism. So I wanted to know if he has any recommendations on uh, policy to tackle waste. Yeah, okay. We'll yeah. pass it on. Yes, yes, sir. Last question, gentlemen, sorry. So we, you're, you, we, you'll take that, Manas. You've got three people now for lunch. Yes. Okay? <laughs> Jagdish Bhatt from Hilaria People's Foundation. Khas karke, Pasmina ke baare mein jo baat ho rahi hai. Ji. Uttar Kaisi aur Bias. Bias jo Kailash root pe hai, waha jo sip wogara hai ya khargos hai, special. उनका पिछले 200 सालों में कोई जेनेटिक मॉडिफाई नहीं हुआ ये गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की एक कमी भी कह सकते हैं या उस पर ध्यान नहीं देते तो आज भी मेरे को लगता है कि लद्दाख से अच्छा उत्तरकाशी और वहाँ पे हो रहा है तो वहाँ के बारे में कोई वो नहीं कर रहा और सेम चीज़ क्यों नहीं लद्दाख में आ रही है एक पहली चीज़ और सेकेंड चीज़ मेघालय में मेडिसनली वैल्यू के काली हल्दी और जिंजर उगाया जा रहा है जिसकी वैल्यू ज़्यादा है हम आलू से आगे क्यों नहीं बढ़ पा रहे हैं लद्दाख में जी थैंक यू आपका क्वेश्चन लंच में आई थिंक मानस आप इनकी प्रेजेंटेशन में भी कहीं आया था कि मुक्तेश्वर के अंदर कुछ काम हो रहा है इसके ऊपर मगर आपको मैं आपकी जानकारी के लिए कहना चाहता हूँ हैदराबाद के अंदर एक बहुत बड़ा इदारा बनाया गया है जिसको जो डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी ने लिया है और इसके अंदर इस कॉल्ड आई थिंक दी इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर बोवाइन एंड फॉर गोट्स एट्सेट्रा यू नो दिस काइंड ऑफ एनिमल्स एनिमल हस्बेंड्री का ये प्रोजेक्ट है बट इसके अंदर दे आर लुकिंग एट बेसिकली जेनेटिकली वॉट आर दी Uh, species which are available in Ladakh and here and there and all kinds of they are, they are doing a, a gene mapping virtually and then and it's a front of the line uh, you know art kind of thing in fact it is right next to I don't know if you're familiar with Hyderabad it is next to the Indian School of Business this uh, institution which has been made and their work is to see what kind of animal is mapping what kind of animal is going to be how to do it how to do it how to do it उसकी उस स्पीशीज़ को इंटैक्ट रखना है उसको कैसे प्रोपोगेट करना है तो उस पर काम हो रहे हैं ऐसी बात नहीं है कि सरकार सो रही है कुछ नहीं कर रही हो रही है उसके ऊपर जैसे उन्होंने वो मैडम ने एक प्रेजेंटेशन दिया था उसमें लिखा भी है कि आपने मुक्तेश्वर और पिथौरागढ़ इन जगहों का नाम लिया है क्योंकि ये कैलाश के रूट पर आते हैं वहाँ ये फार्म्स बनाए गए हैं उसके ऊपर एग्रीकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट कर रहा है मुक्तेश्वर एज यू नो इज़ अ प्लेस वे the yeah, icr is working but i am not talking icr is also doing work in the traditional sense but department of biotechnology is doing very advanced work in this area on uh, genetic mapping etc of animals and their purity and uh, development thank you so thank you everybody for the participation and panelists thank you all very much sorry there is never uh, enough time for people who know so much and have done so much but i think in summary for the session i think firstly next time we'll have to change the subject of the session you know industrial ecosystems for production sorry we didn't touch much of the industrial ecosystem and uh, jobs livelihoods balancing centralized and local cultural enterprises also is something that we didn't do so i apologize but we touched upon everything except that so so it was a it was a great session we talked about energy we talked about employment we talked about livelihoods primarily from local uh, from local resources which are really important be it the pashmina be it rearing of goats and cows and bovine uh, sort of species be it uh, agroforestry and everything to do with agroforestry and food so i think that was a good coverage of employment and if you look at forward and backward integration and you map it with tourism and like i said in the morning we have to look at tourism not as the means how to get people we have to look at tourism as the vehicle to do the marketing for all these products from agroforestry right up to handicrafts and handlooms because you see there's a limit how many of you can go every market and buy a handicraft and handloom where will you put it 
So this whole idea of actually handicrafts and handlooms, unless you have the end usage, meaning modernized, it is of no use. There's no point in talking handloom and handicraft. How many trays will you buy? How many sort of uh, colored photographs will you have? It's not possible. So I think this whole thing of marketing integration of consumers, what they want with modernity is to be addressed. But with that, thank you so much, sir, for your time and your wisdom. Thank you all, gentlemen.